to late for the Buzz 360, sitting down with Maddie Rich. Hey, hey, hey what's how good? Are you? I'm doing good. We're color coordinated here. Yes. I didn't, I didn't call you. Just so y'all know, yeah. I didn't call her. <laughs> we did not plan this. No. Right. Okay, good. No, but great minds think alike. That's right. So, That's yeah. right. <laughs> so your journey started out when you were really young, and you broke out into the scene big time. We yeah. Straight out of Brooklyn. Yeah. And then Inkwell, mm -hmm. and then you kind of dropped off the scene a little bit. So uh -huh. people might have thought, where did you go? But you can't. You took a different direction. I did. So can you talk about your journey and where it went from there? Well, after the success of Strata Brooklyn, which I was like 19 when it won Sundance, and it went to the theaters, which brought me to Hollywood, and I directed the Inkwell uh, at 21 with great actors Jada Pinkett Smith, Lawrence Tate, uh, and that went well. It was the first kind of movie of its kind. Mm -hmm. Uh, where you see African Americans in Martha's Vineyard on the beach, Republicans, Democrats, but their family. Yeah. And that always brings good drama. Uh, then I started developing a lot of projects. I developed the Tupac Shakur project at HBO. I developed a movie with Whitney Houston called Sh uh, Subway Scholar at Showtime. Developed the MG uh, Jimi Hendrix project at Showtime. So I was developing a lot. Yeah. But when you're developing a lot in town, that means you're developing. You're not actually making mm -hmm. projects. So there's this thing in Hollywood called development hell. And you never want to go on development hell because that means as a filmmaker, you're not producing projects, mm -hmm. right? You're developing. Uh, so I got frustrated with that. And then I got an opportunity from Yves Guimau, who's the CEO of Ubisoft, a gaming company in Paris, France. And they were looking for some help on a street racing game. So they hired me to go to Paris, France, and I became the creative director and art director for this game called 187 Ride or Die. It was my first experience in the gaming world, but if, as an artist, you know, telling a story is a story. So gamers like adventures, they like stories, they like heroes, they even like villains. Same thing as, uh, as film, um, you know, people who watch TV or movies and things of that sort. So. I wrote that, became the creative director, art director, took over the team in Paris, France. Mm -hmm. I lived there for a few years, je parle un peu français, I speak a little French. Oh. Don't go more than that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then I also ran a team in Hong Kong. So I, I, I embraced the whole gaming world for a while and got some notoriety out of that. And uh, then I came back to the States to pursue my film and TV career. Wow, so like you say, it's just another avenue to be creative yeah. and tell a story in a different medium. It is. Yeah. And, and it's, it's the medium that's, that's, that makes the most money also. If you just look at dollars and cents of the gaming world in the film world, you know, games always outsell films. Mm. And so I happen to have that, you know, thing as a part of my resume now not just a writer, director, producer who also acts sometimes, but also bringing the gaming element to a project. Yeah, wow, and so much has changed on the scene since you broke out with those first movies. Yeah. You know, now we've got streaming, yeah. cable, um, social media, so many different ways that we can access uh, stories and yeah. to, or to tell a story as well. What do you think of the industry and those mediums? It's amazing, I mean, just the fact that you have an opportunity as a writer, director, or just a content creator, places where you can go and sell your content. Mm -hmm. And right now, everything, content is king. So if you have a good idea, you have a good script, I mean, in, sometimes you don't even need, you know, uh, notable actors. Mm -hmm. Back, you know, in the early 90s, it was about who was attached to the project. Streamers is a little different now. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll take a bet on unknown people, breaking new faces, which is great, right? Yeah. Uh, even though you won't have a big, big budget, but you have a budget, you can get it done. So you have the Hulus and the, uh, the, the Apples, and I mean, now there's NBC has uh, Peacock. There is an opportunity out there waiting for anybody who wants to tell a story. And so that's what I love ab about the streaming, the world that we live in right now, because people are spending more time on their phones, more time indoors, instead of going to the films where you go to a movie to see a big blockbuster. Mm -hmm. And so that's the difference now. Blockbuster summers, you know, the Christmas the, uh, time, those are for the big movies. Streaming is 24-7, seven days a week. 
And as an independent filmmaker, that is a perfect place to be. Mm. And there's a lot of, you know, say 19 or 21 year olds out there now creating even mini movies for Instagram and things like that. Yeah. So as, you know, looking back on your career, what would you tell your 19 year old self? Oh man, what now, would I tell myself? Yeah. Oh, what, wow. You know, what kind of movie would you make? Oh, yeah. I think I would make Straight Outta Brooklyn, but uh, see, I made Straight Outta Brooklyn where it was done on film. Mm -hmm. There was no digital cameras. It was there was none of that. So it was like I had to get investors to finance a film, which is a lot more money, right? And I I got I think I raised about seventy seven thousand dollars, right? I was a teenager. You which don't. Is, that's incredible. Yeah, thank yeah. you. But you don't need seventy seven thousand dollars to make a good quality movie, mm -hmm. with all the great digital cameras that are on the market right now. If you even have half of that budget, you can make a real good movie. And the great thing I also love about uh, the digital world, when I did my short recently, Cure, it, you can let the camera go. You don't have to turn the camera off. When I did Strata Brooklyn, it was like, okay, that went, once I called cut, you turn the camera off because the film is expensive. Now, the digital camera, you let it run, it's cheap, but there is so much opportunities in the digital world as a filmmaker. Even though I know some of my uh, filmmaker friends, they still love the eight millimeter films, shooting on 16 millimeter, it all looks great. But you know, you have Panavision cameras, you have red cameras, you have a lot of manufacturers yeah. that you, if you look at the naked eye, you can't really tell the difference. So I think it's great. Yeah, that's great to have that opportunity to be able to, for a lot more people to be able to tell their stories these days. Absolutely. Yeah. So if I was 19 right now, I would shoot a the modern day Straight Outta Brooklyn because Straight, Straight Outta Brooklyn transcends people who live in Red Hook Projects. That's where I shot the movie. Mm -hmm. It transcends that neighborhood to, I mean, it, it still plays in Germany and Italy and Russia. It plays all over the world, this movie because people struggle, people understand family, they understand someone like the lead character who was trying to figure out a way how to get out of his impoverished neighborhood, mm -hmm. not by doing negativity, but by doing positivity. And so I would definitely do a movie like that, but modern day. Yeah, and has a universal story oh, that everyone can relate to. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And what advice would you have for your younger self? Don't stop. Uh -huh. I, and I still have that, uh, I still carry that, mm -hmm. is that I never stop. You never, if you believe that you are a great actress or mm -hmm. actor or filmmaker or whatever that is, and you know that you've been given that talent, don't stop. Don't ever veer off the track. Because once you stop, then that tells your inner self, mm, maybe I shouldn't do it. So with me, even as a young teenager, as a filmmaker, yeah, I verged into the gaming world. Then I wrote a book for Simon & Schuster. Then I did a short cure mm -hmm. at Screen That Sunday. And now I'm making my way back into the film and television world. You never stop, you keep evolving. Yeah. yeah. So every good artist knows how to adapt. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, I adapt well. And they're like, what does adapt well? mean so when Hollywood says hey you know we we've seen your movies cool and your light goes dim then what do you do mm -hmm. what do you do when that the, the, the light becomes dimmer you got to learn how to adapt adapt is okay let me take my skills my writing directing skills in a new medium yeah video game world then that blows up then you let me take this into virtual reality and augment reality I do that too so you have to adapt to it and then once you adapt to the wave of where you see the market is going if you can mm -hmm. it makes you hot again yeah i like that yeah yeah and there's so many different ways you can share your creativity yes creativity. yeah what's next for you well i uh i shot a short cure mm -hmm. story of this african-american boy who was born with healing powers and I screened it at Sundance. You were there. Yes, Thank yeah, you for coming. Yeah, it was Appreciate great, it, y'all. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, that went over well. And so now we're uh, getting that into production for a series, which is exciting. Oh. Um, 
I also, uh, there was an announcement of me writing a thriller called Caller 100 that was in the Hollywood Reporters recently. Um, directing some television, some episodic stuff. Um, and then, you know, working with Sundance here and there. You know, I love the, the film festival that helped, you know, gave me a great start as a filmmaker. So I like working with them and young filmmakers. And um, so, yeah. I'm keeping it's, busy. It, I'm keeping busy, and, and and then also getting ready to to do another video game. Yeah. Wow. So I still, you know, even though I'm I'm focusing my attention back on film and TV, there's also always in the projects I do a gaming component to it. Yeah. Interesting. It's Wait. the 360 model. Mm -hmm. That's how game companies see. Oh, not even just game companies. Big corporations they see a property. And they look at it and they say, is this a one-off? One-off means, is it just one movie, one game, or can we get multiple yeah. experiences out of it? Mm -hmm. That's how I think. When I think of a, a project like Cure or Call of 100, my projects, they have multiple experiences. Wow. Well, Man. thank you so much for chatting to us Thank here, you. The thank buzz. you for coming. Well, thank you. Not yeah. thank me. I'm glad I came. <laughs> yes, not thank you. you. This is your home. Right. Right. Home. So now it's part of your home. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Maddie Rich, and you've just been buzzed.